So in this video, we're going to go over the action plan. There's a lot of material that we're going to be covering. So if you feel like you're getting overwhelmed, don't worry. Just watch it one time through. Let yourself digest some of the things and then get back to it. Don't get caught up in the terms. Don't get caught up in any worry. If there's a specific section that you're hung up on, maybe there's a piece that you're like, well, I don't really do this or that's not really going to help. Remember, this is your 91 day action plan. Whatever things that you need to focus on, you need to fill out. Maybe you're not going to be reading some books. Maybe the learning's not going to be there, but you are going to have a huge list of projects that you're going to be getting done. That is determined by you. I hope that you're excited. I hope that you're determined to say, you know what, I'm going to take these next 91 days and I'm going to make them be beneficial. I'm going to actually progress. I'm actually going to move forward. I'm actually going to have changes that mean something in my life. When you're filling this action plan out, treat it just like a mind dump. Find a place that you can think. Play some music. Envision what this next 91 days is going to be. To begin with the action plan for the next 91 days, we want to take some time and see what the last 91 days were. These 91 day action statements are a surefire way to ignite my soul. I will passionately pursue and achieve the OKRs. OKRs don't get too hung up on this term. OKRs are simply objectives and key results. So think of them as goals. Think of them as projects. Think of them as things that you need to accomplish. OKRs. You could simply replace that word with goals. The reason why we're saying OKRs is that fits into a larger picture. It fits in with a digital structure. So we have used that term OKRs, but really, if you need to, then Google it. If, it's, if you're getting too hung up on the OKRs, Google it. These next 91 days will be life-changing for myself and those around me. I will clarify my purpose and become my best self. We're preparing to say these next 91 days are going to be different. These next 91 days, I'm going to be more than what I have been. I'm actually going to instill change. Before we do that, so first to get to where I want to be, I need to know where I am. Describe who you were in the last 91 days. If you don't know where you've been, you will not know where you're going. Take some time to review and to understand who was I? Was I who I wanted to be? When describing who you were in the last 91 days, we're not trying to describe who I should have been. We're going to be addressing some of those down here, but this first section, you're not going to address who you should have been. This section, you need to be honest. The section you need to say, who was I the last 91 days? And really, really be honest with yourself. Who was I the last 91 days? Think about work. Think about different areas of life. So your work, your family, relationships, financial, all those different sections. See who you were the last 91 days. Be honest. Again, be honest. Don't, if, if you aren't honest of who you were the last 91 days, you're not going to be able to control who you are going to be the next 91 days. Going down. What amazing things happened these last 91 days that I can be grateful for? So a lot of times when we think about what happened the last 91 days, our first go-to seems to be the bad things. So very first, what things can you be grateful for? What things happened? Next one, if I could live the last 91 days again, what would I do differently? Again, these are pretty deep. Don't just skip over this. Don't just run through this. Actually take some time. Treat it like a mind dump. Block out some section of time to actually think about this and really be honest. If I could live the last 91 days again, what would I do differently? If I could time travel back 91 days, what would I say to myself? So for example, this uh, last 91 days for us and we set up a studio. We set up this studio. What would I say to myself? I would say that it's going to be a lot of work. There's going to be a lot of unknowns but it is going to work out. And so trust the process that you're going through. So that's something that I would say to myself for the last 91 days. What meditations and prayers would have carried me through the last 91 days? So this section is intentionally prompting to say, what times should you have said your prayers more, should have meditated more, should have gotten that help from the other side through that last 91 days? This section altogether, it works in pieces and parts and triggers specific areas of focus that you should have in preparation to look at the next 91 days. So before I begin to construct my plan, I need to determine who I will become in the next 91 days. Pause, say a prayer, review your vision book, and begin to write your 91 day vision. So as of right now, whether you have a vision book or not, it doesn't matter. Really what you've got to envision is who are you going to be the next 91 days? Who are you going to be for your family? Who are you going to be for those around you, where you are at work, 
Next 91 day, what exciting things do I have to look forward to through these next 91 days? Sometimes there's a lot of work that happens and it's nice to just make a note of the things that you're excited for. Maybe it's a date um, with spouse, maybe it's events or outings with your family, things that you have to look forward to just to add that excitement to these next 91 days. Next, go over what things that you will commit to do differently these next 91 days. Sometimes we know that we need a change. We know that we have things in our lives that can be different, that make things easier for us and easier for those around us. And what we wanna do is to commit to doing those things differently. So write those things down. Next section, what meditations or prayers will I carry through the next 91 days? So this one comes right after the things that we need to commit to do things differently because we all need that external help to be able to make those changes. So as we decide what meditations and prayers will I carry through these next 91 days, this helps us get that help from the other side that we need in order to get those things changed. Things I will stop doing to be a success these next 91 days. A lot of times people are distracted. They know that they need to stop something in order to be a success. And that distraction gets in the way of their goals, gets in the way of their change. And then by the end of the 91 days, they're still the same person at the end of that 91 day as they were at the beginning because of the things that got in their way, those distractions. So doing things differently versus things I will stop doing, those are two different sections. So for example, things I will be doing differently, like when I come home at night, are there things that I want to do different as I get into those states, I get into those places? Those are things I want to do different. Things I need to stop. Maybe I'm spending too much time on social media. Those things I need to stop to be a success. So there's difference. Things I need to change and do differently and things that I need to stop. And what areas of life do I need to relook at? There's a little typo here and we are going to go through and update some of those typos. It would be a help if anybody gets in and shows us the things that needs to change. We will change it for the next 91 days. We would really appreciate it along with some of these texts. It's a little bit harder to read because it's black and we will be updating those. So for sure, let us know. But going on, what areas of life do I need to relook at? Sometimes we say, well, we need to stop doing this. We need to do this differently. But sometimes we have an entire area of our life that we've been neglecting that we need to relook at. And these are in a specific order to be able to mentally bring you through different things Last one, what affirmations slash mantras do I want to define these next 91 days? So for example, maybe this next 91 days, what you wanna do differently is have a better attitude when you get home. So then what affirmation or mantras do I want to define these next 91 days? I'm going to before, when I'm sitting in my car, before I get into the house, I'm going to have that affirmation. We define what emotion we need to have. So I am positive, I am, um, so for example, my role, I am the husband I need to be. I am the father I need to be. Essentially, all these pieces can work together to build that mindset of what it needs to be for the next 91 days. It can be a bit overwhelming to try to put all these things in there because as I say, what things will I commit to do differently these next 91 days, these, I, I can list a hundred things. So the reason why we have the mind dump is some of those things that you might need to change, you will put in your mind dump. Some of those things you need to change, you will put in your 91 day action plan, in your vision for your next 91 days, so that you don't get too overwhelmed with the amount of things that you need to change. So make sure that you're getting in and really focusing in on specific stuff. Don't try to do 10 things. Don't try to change 10 things in your life. Specifically select one, two, three, or four things that you're going to change. If you notice here, we didn't leave a lot of space is so that you can focus in and say, these specific things are going to change these next 91 days. Enough said. As you look at these prompts, do your very best to fill them out. And if you say, well, I don't know what to put in there, really, really stretch. So even as you say, what exciting things do I have to look forward to these next 91 days? It can simply be, I look forward to going home every day to see my family. I, I look forward to giving my kids a hug. I look forward to the things that I'll be able to do, just being able to have a home, to be with those people that I love. Like, what exciting things do I have to look forward to these next 91 days? Really take it seriously. 
really prompt those questions and really answer those questions. <clears throat> I do want to address that there's going to be some weed whacking and things in the background, but I felt like this is important enough to get out in time that if you hear background noises, just, just ignore it, just listen to the material. Napoleon Hill talked about a burning desire in his books, and we will do another video, how to structure this specific statement. Bear with me on this while we get that video pulled together. 91 day OKR progress. So what I will take some time to brainstorm and define specific VGM, OKR, and objective goals that I will complete the next 91 days. And Phil, it looks like some of this has cut off, and again, we'll get that fixed in the next rendition. But essentially, we're going to be filling this up with projects, with goals, with things that we're going to do. Think of this as goals, as projects. And we will discuss and make videos on these at a later date. It doesn't mean that you need to wait to fill these out. You already know the things that you should be doing. You know the things in your home that should be different. You know how your approach towards work should be different. You know, personality-wise, those things that should be different. That shouldn't hold you back from filling this section out. Who will be my top three accountability partner options for the next 91 days? This accountability partner is different than a coach. Your coach is sitting with you weekly and kind of getting a holistic review of the things that's going on in your life. Your accountability partner is just specifically towards an area that you say, hey, my finances could be better. Can you check in you know, once a week or every two weeks and let's talk to each other to see how that's going. So rather than going through this process of telling somebody, man, I'm going to do this change, I'm gonna do this change, I'm going to do this change, and then six months later, nothing's happened on it. This is specifically saying, let's pick somebody to go to, to check in and to say, hey, this small part or this big area of life, whatever it is, whatever you decide, I just wanna check in, let's check in on each other to see how things are going. Who should I spend more time with that will be a positive influence in my life? And this positive and negative influence of relationships topic, I wanna go in in detail on another video, but simply put, you have positive influence in your life and negative influences in your life. And if there's specifically somebody that you can reach out to, somebody that you can spend a little bit more time with, maybe go out to lunch with them, maybe meet with them to kind of go over, maybe it's your accountability partner, but somebody that you wanna spend more time with, that will be a positive influence. And it doesn't need to be somebody that's always like, are you getting the workouts that you need? The positive influence can be somebody that's just down to earth and genuine. Somebody that it's nice just to spend time with them, to spend time with them. What positive influence is there in my life? The reason why this one's called a command center, it's because there are four items that would look like this. So I say, what habits would drastically improve my next 91 days? The reason why I put the habit section in the command center section is because generally this command center structure, I have this check mark to say, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. You might be doing your habit tracking digitally. If you're doing your habit tracking digitally, that's all right. <laughs> that's a lot of, but they'll pass. When we talk about what habits are gonna improve the next 91 days, we don't have a way to measure it right here. And that's because you're in, the intention is that you will list those habits that would improve your next 91 days, but then you would put it into a system, whether it's digital, whether it's physical, you put it into a system that you can track. What positive habit will I replace with my old negative habits? If we have a negative habit, maybe it's a negative thinking habit, maybe it's a self-pity habit, we wanna make sure that we say, this is a positive habit that's going to replace negative habits. It's way louder. <laughs> But can you still hear my voice though? Yes, I can still hear you. Still hear it, it's just kind of in the background. What self-imposed rules, minimum standards, can I implement to keep me on the right track? A self-imposed rule or a minimum standard would be, I'm not going to eat sugar. I'm going to go to bed at this time. I'm not going to have digital screen time an hour before I go to sleep. These are self-imposed rules. Sometimes when you look at the spectrum of standards that you wanna uphold in your life, there's so many of them and you can have a whole list of them and you can list them out in the mind dump, but this is saying let's specifically target a minimum standard or some rule that I'm going to have in place that supports this next 91 days, that helps this next 91 days be more than what the last 91 days were. 
And even as we go back, we go through those reviews and what would I do differently? We need to do things differently. And sometimes to do that differently, we need a minimum standard or a rule to be put in place in order for that to stick. So again, we go back to the accountability partner. Some of these self-imposed rules, hey, I'm not supposed to be eating sugar. You go to your account accountability partner and you check in with them. How have you been doing on your sugar intake? And you're gonna say, ah, oh, well, they had cookies at work. And so I you know, snacked on a few of those and, and I should have done a better job. I shouldn't have as many of them. You're going in and you're talking to your accountability partner about the minimum standards that you wanna have in place. But you can still hear myself pretty good. It doesn't feel like it's fighting, yeah. Cause I think that it focuses in on my voice yeah. when I talk. What philosophies will I focus on integrating these next 91 days? A lot of things that are holding us back is our philosophy our philosophy about how life works, a philosophy about how things are. The philosophy, what philosophies will I focus on integrating these next 91 days? For example, a philosophy of good things happen to me. Good things happen to me. That philosophy of saying only good things happen to me, I can carry that throughout these next 91 days. Maybe it's a philosophy about um, being excluded from social gatherings. There's some people who say, Nobody wants me around. Nobody likes me. Nobody invites me to things. I don't have any friends. A lot of times people who don't have those friends, it's because they're not friendly. And so maybe a philosophy you say, I want to integrate that philosophy is if I want friends, I need to be friendly. Next one, what things can I include in my routines to help my next 91 days? In some cases, it might seem like it's repetitive, you know, what positive habits will I replace with my old negative habits? What things can I include in my routines to help my next 91 days? Don't get caught up in saying, well, it, it seems too repetitive. There's going to be some primary focuses and there's going to be some secondary focuses. All right, financial. In order to reach my current business goals, I need to be clear on how often I will work. I will work a total of how many day, work days in the next 91 days. Therefore, I will earn blank in the next 91 days. According to my current needs, I will spend blank in expenses, break down budget on next page. So this financial section is pretty important. So you should calculate how many days you're going to work and how much you will earn for all those days that you work. Actually go through your next 91 days. If you have an outing, don't include that day for the day that you're going to earn. Actually put these down to say how much you're going to earn and how much you're going to spend. Now the back breakdown budget has more details as far as things you can list, but this is important to at least get this part down. What major purchases and expenses will I need to budget for these next 91 days? If you know you have a major car purchase, if you know you have those major things coming up, then put those things down. This isn't to have a fully developed budgeting system. This, not, this isn't a budgeting system. This is just a indicator to say, I need to watch out for these specific purchases. And I will have some sort of other system that manages my finances, whatever that system is. Um, if this is a lot, if you're going through this video and you're actually trying to fill some of these out, maybe you're pausing the video during each section and you need to take a break because this is so much, take a break. Uh, for the estimated time for getting ready for the next 91 days, you're gonna be spending about a half hour to an hour a day for these next two weeks writing some of these things out. Let's just say this next 91 days, it's going to be too much for you to really encapsulate all of these and you really wanna work focus on a few of these sections. And maybe you're leaving this, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna go through a workbook, I don't know if I'm gonna go through an audiobook, I don't know if I'm gonna develop talent, but I know I'm going to do some research. I know I'm going to focus on these specific character traits. Like these are the things I'm gonna focus on. Realize this 91 days is your 91 days. Decide what that's going to be. Learning and development. Things of focus, concepts, character traits, or, val or values. What concepts, character traits, or values will I focus on? Maybe we need to be more honest with ourselves or those around us. Maybe we need to be more patient. Maybe we need to be more kind. So this section right here notes best practices down here we can say this best practices, we can point to some of those sources. Research and self-study. So what topics, ideas, products, courses do I need to research? Or maybe you need to research Napoleon Hill. Maybe you need to research your industry or the things that you're working on. Research and self-study. Write down those topics that you're going to be researching. And maybe they're tied into things that you're going to be changing. So you list a positive habit 
and now you need to have research. You need to actually get in and research some of those things. Maybe you just need to research or study more spiritual material. This notes slash best practices right here is referencing. So this is the topic and this is the best practice. Formal learning. What classes, courses, workshops, or experiences will I complete? And learning names. So what is it that I'm learning? Maybe let's go with the gardening. Gardening, and then I have the YouTube channel that I'm referencing that I'm going to be doing my learning from. Maybe I have a specific course or a class that I'm going to be taking, so I name that course, and then I write the creative of that course. Over here, we say how many minutes per day I'm going to be doing that course and doing that learning. We have a start date, we have a finish date. I could use this to say, I'm gonna start this the first 30 days, you know, I'm gonna start it, I'm gonna finish it. Next one, first 30 days, start it and finish it. Next 30 days, start it and finish it. it maybe you have to do some sort of um, curricular activities, curricular hours or courses, and you say you need to do 10 hours of curriculum. All right, next section, books. The book name, the author, pages per day, start date, finish date. So total hours, this is a typo. It is supposed to say total pages, but we will just imagine, I mean, scribble out, scribble out in here where it says hours and put pages per day. For example, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go through this book, put the name, put the author, go towards the very end of it and say, how many pages per day will I go through this? And maybe because these are so short, then I say, you know what? I can go through 50 pages a day on this. Or maybe I'm gonna take my time. Maybe I'm gonna slowly progress through this book. Maybe I just say two pages a day. Whatever that is, put the pages per day, the start date and the finish date. So what books will I read? When will I finish them? Now, if I put a different book, let's say I put something like this on, way bigger so much more detail and the page amount is like 800 pages over 800 pages if i were to break this down into this pages per day i might say you know what i'm going to only do five pages per day versus 50 pages per day and i should write that total so again i said sorry that is wrong right up there but you want to write your total 853 whatever that page is then Put the total pages right there and we'll fix that in the next one. Now, if you're not going to be reading a book for these next 91 days, that's okay. I'd highly encourage you to do so. But if not, maybe you do audiobooks. Maybe audiobooks are better. This one, similar thing, book name, author, total hours, because now we're not going pages, we're going towards hours, minutes per day, start date, finish date. Maybe I'm listening to James Allen's As a Man Thinketh, and I want to do that 10 minutes a day from like when I go to work. I'm, I'm driving, I wanna make sure that every time I'm in there, at least 10 minutes on this audiobook. Now I'm gonna say start date and finish date, but I'm going to list those books there. Again, it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work and it is a lot of thinking. If you do feel that it's too much. Maybe you don't even know. Maybe maybe you get this book and you don't know how many pages per day you're going to be reading this. You just know you're going to be reading it throughout this next 91 days. That's okay to leave those blank. That's okay to leave those blank. Do what works for you. Don't get too caught up on the boxes and the terminology and, and do I have to fill this out or do I have to fill this out? These videos are designed to be able to tell you why we put them in and you use them in a way that works best for you. Workbooks. So in one of the videos, we referenced Darren Hardy workbooks. Maybe through this next 91 day, you're going to be filling those out. Maybe the, the workbooks are a little bit too much to fill out right now. And within this time frame, you're not gonna focus on filling them out. But maybe per day, you're gonna take 10 minutes per day. Start date, finish date. These sections on this side is meant for you. You decide what this should be. Developing talents, that should be pretty clear. I wanna learn to play the piano. I wanna learn to, uh, do a backflip, I don't know, whatever it is. You're gonna spend this many minutes per day. This is where I'm gonna start doing it and this is where I'm gonna finish it. So this helps me to determine what those 91 days should be in regards to books or to learning or to developing talents. Learning and development continued. This section is designed to select specific 
media. So what long form educational media do I want to include? Let's just say a family member or somebody recommends a documentary or a specific movie for education. Like when we say long form, we're saying about over an hour. What long form media do you want to watch? Oh, I really want to watch this documentary. I really want to watch this thing. I really want to watch this thing. So this right here is designed to help us get out of the idea that algorithms need to feed what we watch. You want to decide what it is that you want to watch. You want to decide what it is you want to learn. So let's just say there's some formal learning that you've selected or even some research that you've selected. And you go in and you say, you know what, I'm going to be researching a topic on this specific help or maybe this specific part of history. I'm going to be researching. I want to put some, maybe I do my research and there's this video and this video and this video and I put that list together and I say, this is my watch list and maybe I say minutes per day, maybe it's an hour or don't even worry about this right here. Just create a list of media you're going to watch and then make sure that you get in and watch it. Educational short form media to watch, that's less than an hour. Maybe you have a list of things that you're like, oh, I gotta go through these series in your research. You do some research, you find this media you need to watch, you put it in. Or maybe an accountability partner comes in and says, oh, you should really watch this. Or a coach says, you need to watch this piece of media. You need to watch this series. This is where those things go. Educational interactive media to watch. This is a typo. We need to take out to watch. Educational interactive media. Maybe it's an in-person workshop. Something that's interactive. An interactive media. Family dates. We put family dates birthdays, activities, and events. I know there's a lot of people with a lot of birthdays, a lot of activities, and a lot of events. What this is supposed to be is a, I'm specifically selecting for these next 91 days, I wanna make sure that we celebrate this birthday. We do this activity and something that you really need to focus on. So maybe you have your own digital calendar and you're tracking all those birthdays, you're tracking activities, you're tracking events. But this one are specifically ones that you want to put in your mind to say, I need to show up better for that activity. I need to show up more for that event. Meetings and interactions. So do I need to schedule? So again, talking about this, you might be thinking you have hundreds Maybe, maybe you have hundreds of meetings or interactions that you're going to have and you put them on a digital calendar. And these are to focus on specific items. Influences to follow, YouTube, podcast, Instagram, social media, influences for these next 91 days. What influences do you want to have in your life? What specific YouTubers, what specific podcasts, which, which specific things would you include to make these 91 days what they need to be. What news outlets articles will I use to stay informed? Staying informed is important, but there's too many people that get wrapped up in what's going on. They get so caught up in those distractions that they're not even able to focus on specific family things, specific social things, specific learning because they're so informed as what's going on. They're not focusing on their life. They're not focusing on what should be going on. This is designed to say, let me reel those things in. Let me be intentional about what it is that I should be informed about, what it is that I should be tuning into. So maybe Epic Times, that's a, a decent one. I'm going to certain minutes per day. Maybe I do one hour a week of staying informed versus you know, four or five hours a day. You do need to know what's going on, but you need to prioritize what's going on in your own life. Too many people are informed about what's going on in the world and they're not informed about what's going on in their own life. And so this is to say, let me cut a lot of that out and just decide where that's going to come from. Recreational media to watch. It's worth having the fun media, the fun entertainment media, but just like staying informed, reel it in, keep it simple. Maybe it's an hour a week. Maybe it's two hours a week. I don't know what that is for you. Maybe it's 10 minutes, 15, 20, 30 minutes a day. I don't know what that is, but essentially what you wanna do is for that recreational time, here's the stuff that I'm going to be consuming and me being intentional about it, not letting the algorithms just decide, hey, I know what's best for you. Here's what you should watch. Here's what you should do. Here's what you should spend your time on. Rather than having all of that, you go through and you say, this is the recreation I'm going to have. This is the activities I'm going to have. And now saying that about the algorithms, you can do a, you can use those to your advantage. 
research and self-study. You can start to study things and use those algorithms as a way to help your learning and get recommendations on those areas. And this can help you be intentional about that. <clears throat> In this next section, accountability contract is big enough that this needs to go in another video. What I will say about this accountability contract, when you have things that you struggle to change and you struggle to get through and you really need some, you know, big pushing to get that in place, accountability contract, that's what it serves. The recommended schedule should be pretty straightforward. You fill out the things that ideally, what, what's the perfect schedule for this next 91 days? We will do another video to deep dive on this as well. Goal graph, we will have another video that talks about this as well. I appreciate you making it through this video. I know that it's really long and it can be overwhelming to get through each of these sections. It is worth the time, it is worth the effort. I hope that it inspired you to actually take a look at what these next 91 days can be. And if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed about the documents and the terms and whatnot, don't worry about it. You'll have the time to be able to come back and review and look at these things. We're, let's say we are 30 days into the 91 days come back and revisit some of these videos. It's not a one and done. You're not gonna just do it a week and then kind of set it on the shelf. This is an active plan where you actively work to determine the things that you're going to include in your life. So if you have any other questions, please let me know and let's make it happen.